Uh, joining us now is national security and political analyst and president of Righteous Media, Paul Rykoff, to talk more about the situation and the battle in Ukraine. Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, let's start with this latest attack in Zaporizhia. Uh, what's your read on the situation and another deadly target by the Russian forces? I think what we've seen now, Marnie, is the tide has really turned. The Ukrainians have the momentum. They're advancing in the east and in the south. They've got the world behind them, and they seem to be gaining momentum by the day. The Russians on the other side are becoming increasingly desperate. Their special forces units have been annihilated. Their conventional units have been decimated, and now they've instituted a draft. So what you're seeing on the Russian side is they're scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of their equipment, in terms of their people, and in terms of their tactics, which makes, which makes it extremely dangerous and precarious because you don't know what Putin's going to do. But I think the message here is that Ukraine can win this, is winning this, and, and can really turn the tide and set an example for the entire world. And here in the U.S., our support has made a difference. The weapons, the money, the drones, the HIMARS uh, mobile weapon systems have been a real game changer. And now we're seeing the Ukrainian army advance at a level that most hadn't predicted and should be able to continue all the way right up to the edge of the Russian border if, if we can get it moving before winter sets in, when things will start to stall and, and slow down a bit. Yeah, that will change the landscape of the battlefield. You know, so many experts early on, and Paul, I think you and I probably thought the same thing. This would be a war of attrition that could go on for years, just who can outlast one another. But do you think these gains by the Ukrainian me Ukrainians mean that we're closer to an end than many of us first thought? Well, we're closer to a better result for Ukraine. I, I, you know, I was one of, one of many, a uh, few maybe, who said that Ukraine could win this and the support of the West would be essential. And I think now what we're seeing is there's a fighting spirit in Ukraine that just can over, overcome almost everything. And if you complement that with the weapon systems, with billions of dollars of support and drones and intelligence from the U.S., it can be less bloody. It can be hopefully quicker. We can move towards some kind of an end state, but I think we also have to brace ourselves for the brutality of war. I mean, this is like what we're seeing in the southern U.S. after the hurricane on steroids. I mean, they've been enduring this since April and even before that when the Ukrainians uh, attacked contested regions. So it's very bloody. It's very brutal. Uh, but it's a good result so far for Ukraine and ahead of where many folks would have, would have predicted. The key now is we've got to pour it on. We've got to continue to support them even when things happen back here at home, when we're dealing with inflation, when we're dealing with the hurricane. We've got to understand this is a fight for the survival of democracy. This is about holding a fascist regime at bay and about trying to create more stability in the world. And that's how high the stakes are. And I think we've got to continue to remind Americans about that when we're dealing with problems that we see here at home. Absolutely. Don't turn a blind eye because it continues. You know, you brought up the weaponry that the U.S. has provided, and it has made a significant impact on the battlefield. But now you see Russia turning to Iran uh, using some of these kamikaze drones. Um, how significant is that type of weaponry? It's desperation. I mean, you know, the Ukrainians are trying uh, to continue this momentum, and now we're pouring on HIMARS weapon systems, which I've called kind of the Aaron Judge of the battlefield. I mean, this has been a total game changer. It's like nothing we've ever seen. And on the Russian side, the desperation continues, reaching out to Iran, appealing uh, to, to other reckless nation states. They'll appeal to North Korea. This is Putin slowly uh, and methodically being backed into a corner, and that's why we've got to understand there is always a nuke threat. It doesn't have to be nuclear anni annihilation. He can still do a nuke test. He can do a warning shot. He can do a low-grade uh, nuke strike of some kind, which is always something we have to understand on the battlefield. But, you know, we're, we're on a roll here. The Western side is on a roll. And part of the, the underreported story, Marty, is that there are American fighters in this. On, on my podcast this week, I talked to folks who are part of the Territorial Army. You know, the, the Ukrainians issued a call, and Americans have answered. And Americans are part of this, and I think that's a really under reported the story that will start to understand the months to come. Right. And the Americans are there helping to teach them how to use many of the weapons that we have sent to support them in the war. So they're they're serving a critical role. Yeah, I mean, we've been training Ukrainians for, you know, over a decade now. These have been our allies. I think most Americans don't understand that Ukrainians have been training side by side with Americans before this all started. But they're also deep in the fight. Two Americans were captured uh, earlier this year. They were held for 100 days. They were tortured. And they've recently been released as a part of a prisoner exchange. You're going to hopefully hear from those Americans in the news in, in the months to come. But I think it'll paint a picture of the human side of this. You know, the Ukrainians have done a great job of controlling the message and making sure we, we understand 
what's happening, but the human side, and I think the American side is still untold. And I think we should look forward to hearing from those folks in, in the days to come. Yeah, Alex Drucki and Andy Wynn, uh, both from Alabama and home safe on American soil now. Uh, Paul, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I'm curious if you think that diplomatic talks are more important than ever as we see Vladimir Putin further pushed into a corner, the pressure and his options are running out. If this is the time that the U.S. Um, starts to intervene and say there's got to be another option out of this. Well, it's, it's always worth exploring, but you can't negotiate with a madman. I mean, Putin is not abiding by international norms. He's not abiding by the Geneva Convention. He's authorizing torture and rape and pillaging. I mean, this is not a person we can reason with. I think the important part for us to emphasize is he has to be defeated. He has to be defeated on the battlefield. And increasingly, the political unrest is creating a precarious situation for him at home. So there's another phase of this, where Ukraine could not only win the war, but the Russian people could topple Putin. And then we have another level of instability, but that is an end state. I don't think this ends until Putin is captured killed or out of Russia. And that is something we have to talk about and discuss and understand he's not the kind of guy you can sit down with a table and negotiate with because he's bombing women and children on a daily basis. And that's the reality of the, what the Ukrainians see every day. And it's why they're fighting so ferociously. Mm. Uh, Paul, while I've got you, I want to talk about this breaking news out of Syria this morning. There's new reporting, a U.S. helicopter raid on a government held village in Syria killed an ISIS official. Um, we're still working to confirm uh, the extent of these reports, but your reaction to this news? You know, Martin, I think the most important thing for folks to remember is America is still at war. You know, because we pulled troops out of Afghanistan, because there aren't troops in Iraq, doesn't mean that American forces aren't engaged on a daily basis. And this is a painful and I hope stark reminder that America's sons and daughters are still in combat. They're still in conflict zones. They're still getting combat pay. And, and Syria is, is one example. The war in Afghanistan may be over for America and the wars in the Middle East may be over for our troops, but it's not over for the people over there. And it's not over for our elite units, for our special operations people, for our drone operators. They are still in, in harm arms way every day. And that's why it's been called the forever war. America is still got a military presence and engaging in combat in countries around the world, most of which Americans probably couldn't find on a map. And, and Syria is an important one to keep an eye on. Yeah, our freedom comes at a cost and our democracy is fragile. And we're seeing that uh, globally. Hey, Paul, it's uh, great to talk to you. Good conversation this morning and important one as well. Thank you. Thank you, Marnie. Appreciate it. All right. Coming up, my conversation with a man